Hi everyone and welcome to Rum Runner Dance. I'm Dan Genovese. Today we're making an original tiki cocktail, the Down Easter Alexa. Today's recipe, Down Easter Alexa, came to me when I first started creating my own craft cocktails and my own tiki cocktails. One of my favorite drinks when I first started to get into tiki was grog. Love grog. Still love grog. But the grog that we actually drink often in tiki bar, or in any bar for that matter, is a often a far cry from what grog originated as and what it really was, especially in the British Navy. Uh, but I'm not going to get into deep into the history of grog. We're going to save that for another episode because we kind of have to talk about why the heck did they even have rum on a ship and gin on a ship? What was the purpose of that? What's Navy strength and does that have anything to do with it? And was beer originally the main thing that they drank? We'll find out then. But for today, this Down Easter Alexa, I started to think about this drink as I wanted to take grog and I wanted to start to blend together different rums that don't have the same flavor profile to achieve a good blended flavor and to accentuate that with some citrus as well as some spice. And the goal here was, was to try to bring together the Caribbean in kind of just like a glass. You get a taste of the Caribbean all at once. And the sweet, the tropical, the sour, the spice, the strong flavors of the rum, and also all the flavors that they bring, unique to the distillation process that they have, as well as the regions that they come from. I think I did justice to that um, through this drink, but where the name came from is a much cooler story than how I created the drink. So one thing I love to do um, is actually listen to music with my wife and to randomly belt out songs while we're doing, you know, just random stuff around the house. Oftentimes this involves me singing the complete wrong words to the song because I don't know them and I just make them up as I go. Uh, One of the songs that I loved the most was the Down Easter Alexa. I tell my wife all the time, isn't this such a great song? She's like, yes, Dan. I'm the one who first introduced you to it. I'm like, no, that didn't happen. Um, But the song is really good. If you don't know much about Billy Joel, and he was the writer of the song, he's originally from Long Island, and a lot of towns in Long Island, especially ones that are closer to the ocean, are fishing towns. It's not uncommon for the Northeast. And the primary purpose of fishing towns, they get basically all the money in the town survived based upon the sea. Um, So in the song, he kind of talks about the plight of the fishermen and how they have to keep going further and further out to sea, doing different types of fishing, oftentimes in more dangerous waters. And also on top of that, uh, they're getting less and less money So it's becoming a dying industry. And he wanted to bring some awareness to that. So he made that inside of a song called the Down Easter Alexa. The Alexa is actually the name of his daughter. Um, And that's where he got the name from. But it's a really cool song. And I kind of always pictured, and if you listen to the words, um, there's different references to like trolling Atlantis and to the canyons, all of that has to, all of that obviously refers to the ocean itself and uh, oftentimes fishermen especially from these villages in the northeast are really into what's known as bay fishing fishing in a bay is actually pretty safe um, you're not in you're not out in the open ocean um, the storms and everything basically come at you from one way when you're inside of a bay because there's the mouth of the bay and then you're surrounded by land um, so it, it's not riskless but it's less risky the problem is is that when you fish in the bay 
and sometimes they go in and they do like different kinds of rules to protect the habitat and the life and the fish that are in there from overfishing. Well, that causes the fishermen to have to go into different waters, use different methods, and then fish. So it, that's really where I got this drink from. I wanted to bring the, some awareness, not just to you know, the fishing industry and the plights of good, hardworking Americans trying to make a living, but also wanted to br tie that into the plight and the hard work of the people who live on the various different islands in the Caribbean who actually work very hard to export a lot of these products, which is a huge source of the income from the islands. So I wanted to make that be a little bit and tie that together so that the the difficulties that we are all enduring here in the United States and, and different populations are, are enduring is not unique to us. We're all connected throughout the world with these different struggles that we have. So bringing that together in a glass and naming it Down Easter Alexa, knowing what Billy Joel actually uh, was doing when he was writing that song to bring some more awareness, I'm hoping to continue that by honoring that song, by naming this drink after that, um, after that song that he wrote in order to also make more people aware about what's going on in the Caribbean and help out some of these small countries keep surviving and start to thrive. So with that, why don't we get into making this awesome drink. Drink mixer today. Jigger. So we're gonna start out with some fresh lime juice here and we're gonna need one ounce. Measurements in this are much easier. They're pretty easy to remember. Almost everything is a whole ounce measurement. Next, orange juice. We got Caracara -car orange juice here. Love Caracara -car orange juice. We're gonna do an ounce of that. Next, simple syrup. I got two to one, as always. I'm gonna do half an ounce. This is where you can see that it's a little bit slower with the two to ones, the pouring. And this is warm too, by the way, this isn't cold. All right. Next, we can spice this up a little bit, right? So we're gonna use Bitterman's Tiki Bitters. I love these. Um, got a lot of spices in them. I don't know all the spices. But it's so good. I, I mean, I love the smell of these. Um, they're used in some tiki drinks. Um, I wish more people would use them because they're so good. Um, we need eight drops. And you want to make sure that you do measure these out in drops. Don't put this into a dasher bottle. Um, it's they are strong. Um, in terms of the, the spice flavor. So adding just a couple drops too much can throw off the, the flavor of the drink. Next, we're gonna get some lightly aged rum. Again, color doesn't matter with lightly aged. Quality over color. So I'm gonna use today Denison Three Year. Love their lightly aged rum. Very tasty. We're gonna need one ounce of this guy. Next, we're gonna go to Martinique and we're gonna grab some of their famous rum, Calumet's, um, their VSOP rum here. This is an aged uh, agricole rum, fantastic. I love the smell on this. It's got that grassiness uh, smell and kind of earthy kind of tones to it because it's fresh pressed cane juice, it's tasty stuff. We're gonna need an ounce of this as well. Okay, last rum that we're gonna need is one of my favorites, Demerara rum. Um, Demerara comes from Guyana, along the Demerara River. And the best tasting one uh, that I like to use is Hamilton 86. I mean, can't go wrong with this stuff. Fantastic flavor, good good blend, good age on it. Love the, love the way that they handle this uh, rum. Uh, from this distillation to the bottle. Uh, another one, if you can't get Hamilton 86, for whatever reason, it's not around you, 
um, or they're out, uh, you could always grab Eldorado. Eldorado 5 or 8, I tend to go with an 8 for this drink. I think it tastes a little bit better. Uh, you can definitely go with a 5. I wouldn't go with 12 or 15. I think that's overkill for this one from an Eldorado perspective. Um, also, if you can get it, uh, it's a little bit hard to find too, but Lemon Heart and Sons 1804 Demerara Rum, that's really good. Love Lemon Heart for 151, but if you can find their 1804 original one, that is fantastic as well. We're gonna need an ounce of this guy. All right. That takes care of all of our ingredients. We're just gonna need to add some ice into this. So, 12 ounces of crushed ice. It's two of my six ounce scoops. And we're gonna flash blend this guy for yeah, about four seconds. Okay, now. We're gonna go ahead and let's wipe off our board here a little bit. I wanna make sure we're not getting stuff everywhere. There we go. I'm gonna grab myself a double old fashioned glass. Remember all of the all the different items that you see me use here, the mixer, the glass, um, even the Woodrow coasters that I have here, this rustic coaster, I use these a lot. Um, you can pick them up in my Amazon store. Just click that link below and you can see all the different bar gear that I use and you can order it for yourself. So. The double fashion glass is what we're gonna to use today. So we're gonna take all this and just dump it right in. The reason I love the double fashion glass for this is you wanna add some ice to keep this nice and chilled. So we're gonna fill this up with crushed ice. Next thing is we gotta garnish this guy up. All right, so from the garnish side of this, it's gonna be pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna do a classic um, kind of garnish on this, what I think to be kind of a classic garnish is. We're gonna start out with some mint. So we got some nice little mint sprigs that I have right here. Um, these guys are really great. I'm gonna grab this leaf, he's a little wilty. We're gonna get rid of him. Yeah, so you're gonna measure up your tops of your mint to get them close to each other. And what you wanna do is take these bottom guys, pinch, twist, break them all off, right? You're gonna take this and you're gonna tuck this and you wanna grab from the bottom and pull the leaves up. I'm gonna tuck that guy right in there and then you're just gonna let it go. And then you go ahead and you do a little bit of fixing if you need to kind of fan them out a little bit if they got too tucked in. Here we go, that's it. So that's our mint. We're also gonna add some citrus wheels here. Um, you guys have known me to have mentioned these quite a bit. I love um, Cocktail Garnish Company. Uh, they are uh, an excellent company. I've been using them for quite a while. Um, they make some fantastic products. And right now we're just at the start of fall. So, I mean, it hasn't really felt that much like fall in Chicago yet, but, as of right now, but it's getting there. So fall means blood orange season love blood oranges get them and use them in your cocktails they are fantastic to replace any orange juice in there with and they add a different flavor to it um they add a little bit more of a, like a raspberry type flavor to it and not so much like the sweet really orangey flavor they're great um make sure you pick them up and try them out so i'm just going to grab myself a lemon wheel here because i love their lemon wheels and a blood orange wheel uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and tuck that in. Make sure you use the link below. I mean, check out Cocktail Garnish Company. Save yourself 10% on your order. All right, there we go. Looks nice. Last thing is we need our Surfside Sips. Glass reusable straw. Why? Because we love turtles and we don't want to pollute the ocean. So, what, which kind of straw are we gonna use here today? I don't know. Um, you know what? I use this straw so much. I mean, I really... Like Andrew, I know you watch the episodes. Um, <laughs> I really, I, I, I think I need an, an extra one of these because if I ever broke this straw, I think I'd be heartbroken. This, this guys, is a, an excellent straw. So this is kind of like a customization that you can get on the straw. 
the base straw here is obsidian black glass. And then what he does is this cool detailing work, which actually takes quite a bit of time uh, for him to do. And it makes it into what's known as a dragon glass straw. Then on top of that, he puts this little tiny octopusy guy. Um, and they're great. I love these. Um, and you can get these details on here. So if you see a glass and you want some detail on there, but you don't see an option to add it, don't worry. Message Andrew, tell him what you want. Also, when you do that, make sure that you use code RUMRUNNER20. Save 20% off of every order, even these custom guys. All right, so we're gonna add this guy down into here. And there you have it, everyone. RUMRUNNER DAN ORIGINAL, RIFF ON A GROG, THE DOWN EASTER ALEXA. Let's give it a taste. Love, I love this drink. I mean, of course I do. I made it, right? <laughs> so you're thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I make the drinks I like to drink, but it's tasty because it blends together rums that you often can't find in a rum blend if you were going to go to a store. If you just wanted to buy one bottle, it's kind of hard to find. But Denison Three Year offers this great, lightly aged rum flavor because they use rum from Trinidad and Tobago in here from Angostura. Um, so it's, that's fantastic quality rum. Um, you know, Hamilton 86 here has like oakiness to it. It has some, you know, different kind of deeper, richer flavors that you get in a dark rum, which is great, but you don't get the hogo from the Jamaican. So it's like all the pluses of the Jamaican minus having that hogo flavor into it, which I love having that in the drink. Just not in this one. The reason why is I don't want that hogo to overstep and shadow out the flavor that I really want to accentuate in this drink, which is the Martinique rum. Martinique rum, if you have not tried it, you absolutely need to. But their rum is so flavorful. It has so much flavor in it from the cane juice and that comes together in this earthy kind of vegetal kind of quality but it's rounded out here it's accentuated a little bit with some oakiness from the uh the demerara rum you get this bigger strong rummier i like to call them rummier flavors i'll learn a better word for it but for that's really like the the thing that comes to mind it's like what you picture rum should taste like is what you get from denison three year all that comes together with this so, kind of sweet, accentuated type of citrusy note that you get that's clearly present, but rounds out all of these kind of rum flavors. But then you get it kind of like spiced up a little bit, which it's like this earthy, oaky, rummy flavor, and then it's spiced up with our tiki bitters. I love the balance of it here. Uh, it, it's This is a great tiki drink to to go ahead and try if you're newer to martinique rum i would definitely tell you give this one a try it's an approachable version for martinique if you're a little bit scared about that vegetal taste to it or that stronger kind of grassy flavor give this one a try with it first um and, and let me know what you think about it put some comments below when you shake this up i'd love to hear from all of you around what you think about the recipes when you tried it was this your first tiki drink you know um if you made substitutions because we have different things available all around the country so tell me what you did leave some comments below also make sure that you click the like button on it i really appreciate it every single time that you do if you haven't already done so click that subscribe button it's right here go ahead and click that you'll get notified every single time that we're coming out with a brand new video while you're waiting for that next video to come out why don't you check out some of these other videos here i have a big library on tiki ones as well as some other ones over here that you may really like thank you all so much for joining me today and until next time everybody Kole maluna